Hey everybody, this is Gavin with Vintage Computer Center, and I just wanted to do a quick video today showing people how to do disk copies with the FujiNet. Uh, I've noticed a lot of people have been posting questions on how do I copy the disk image from a TNFS server to my local FujiNet SD card, or how do we copy floppy disk to the FujiNet SD card, and it's really a simple process. What you need to keep in mind is as far as the Atari computer is concerned, the FujiNet is just a set of disk drives attached to it and an 850 interface attached to it. Uh, of course, they do also add the N device for networking, but it's got the R device for RS-232, which handles all the telecommunications, so it's a modem emulator, and it emulates up to eight physical floppy drives attached to the computer. So the computer just sees it as these devices. It doesn't see it as some, you know, 2020 cool little, little device. It, it has no idea what's attached to it. It just thinks it's something on the SIO chain that looks like a disk drive. So uh, keep that in mind when you're working with the FujiNet. It's just a disk drive. It just does a lot of other things too. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. Uh, pardon my low lighting and my lousy sound, but I'm just getting into this whole video thing. So uh, going to have to bear with me. And of course the uh, the video display that I'm using is just using the the composite output of the Atari 130XE that is stock, except for a memory upgrade. It doesn't have any kind of video upgrades. It doesn't have Sophia 2 or anything like that attached to it. So the quality isn't fantastic, but it's not too bad. Uh, anyways, we're in the config screen. This is the screen you get when you boot up your Fuji Net for the first time, or actually any time you don't have a disk mounted to it. And you can see various TNFS hosts on the list there. We've got the SD card and then the various ones. The bottom one is the one that we set up for Vintage Computer Center users. And we've had a bunch of empty drive slots. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the weather program that most people are probably pretty familiar with from uh, Poland. And we're going to copy that disk from Poland to my SD card. Uh, so we've got to do a couple of things to get that ready. First of all, we've got to create a new disk on the SD card. And we do that by creating a new image. So we select the SD card and we hit enter. And you can see this SD card has nothing on it right now. It's a brand new card. And we're going to create a new image, aka a new disk. So we're going to hit the N. And you need to enter a name for the image. Uh, let's just call this one weather.atr since it's going to be the weather program. And hit enter. And then here you can select the size. You can see the FujiNet's going to support anywhere from the single-sided, single-density, 90K, all the way up, uh, depending on what version of DOS you're using. Some DOSs won't support that, so make sure if you do set a bigger image that uh, the version of DOS you're using will support it. The DOS that I'm going to be using for this disk copy is just my DOS, so we're going to stick with the single-sided, single-density, 90K disk. Go select one for 90K, and are you sure? Yes. Now we need to pick a slot we're going to mount this to. And since I can't boot to a non-formatted disk, I'm going to put this in disk slot 2. And it created the image and mounted it into slot 2. The next thing I'm going to do here is go down to our Vintage Computer Center TNF, TNFS server. I don't know why that had such a tongue twister. TNFS. I'm used to an NFS. Uh, so we're going to go in there and we're going to select... MyDOS 3.08A, and we're going to mount that to slot 1, because we want to be able to boot to DOS. I'm going to escape to get back again, and then the last step we're going to do is we're going to go down to the FujiNet.pl, which is the FujiNet server in Poland, and we're going to mount the weather image that he has. Think of this as sticking a diskette with the weather program into drive slot 3. So... What we've got set up right now is we've got our drive slot one is my DOS coming from Vintage Computer Center's TNF, TNFS server in drive slot two. We have the weather image that is the new disk image on the SD card. At a drive slot three, we have the weather image from Poland. And all of those, as far as the Atari computer is concerned, are disks. There's three physical drives hooked to this machine, and there's a disk in each drive. And that's what's on there. But think about this for a second, what this thing is actually doing. That drive slot number three with weather, that is mounting to a device in Poland, which is about as far away from me as you can get in the world. I'm in California. 
Poland's on the other side of the world. So it's mounted that via the internet to a machine in Poland, and it's treating it just like a floppy drive attached physically to this computer. Pretty amazing when you think about it. So we're ready to go here. What we're going to do is we're going to hit the Option key, and we're going to reboot the Atari, and it should boot up using the MyDOS image. Okay, and remember, that's booting DOS from our Raspberry Pi that's set up as a TNF, TNFS server. So it's using the internet to attach that disk and it's booting DOS over the internet. But again, the computer just thinks it's a local disk drive. Uh, so when we do a directory of disk one, you can see DOS dupe and then I've got a test basic program in there just to use for copying and verifying that we can open and close files. Uh, if we do a disk two, we're going to see zero sectors because it's a non-initialized disk. It is a blank floppy disk that I just stuck in the drive. That's what the Atari computer sees it as, is just an absolute blank floppy disk that needs to be formatted. And when we look at disk three, we're going to get a directory of the image from Poland. So all of those files are sitting on a device somewhere in Poland right now. Uh, first thing we're going to do when we use a new diskette is we have to initialize it. So we're going to do I, and we're going to format disk number 2, and yes, I'm sure. Now we can go look at the directory of disk number 2. I just did A. And we got 708 free sectors, so it's a blank, single-density floppy disk in my second drive waiting for us to do something with it. And to copy the disk from Poland to my SD card, we're going to do J for duplicate disk. And we're going to select 3, 2, because we're copying from the third disk, which is the, the image in Poland, to the second disk, which is the image on my SD card. And hit Enter. Insert both disks. They're both inserted. And we hit Return. So what this thing is doing right now is it's grabbing all of the data from that machine in Poland, and it's copying it via the Internet over to the FujiNet, and store it on my image that's located in slot 2. The computer just sees three physical drives, and it sees me copying drive 3 to drive 2. And since this is a stock machine, I've got the SIO speed set to normal, so it's going to copy it relatively slow. It's a pretty good sized disk. Uh, but it's pretty amazing when you actually think about what's taking place right now. How it's copying these files from halfway around the world through my SD card. And it does take a minute to do it. But who would have thought here in 2020, I'm using a computer that's 35 plus years old uh, with a FujiNet attached to it, and I could move files around via the internet from a machine I'm not even sure what the machine is in Poland. I don't know what he's got that attached to, but it's moving it from a machine in Poland to my SD card in the Fusionet. I can't stress the just the coolness of that. And who would have thought? I know when I was a kid back in the early 80s, and I had my computer bulletin board, and there was no such thing as the Internet, I never dreamt this kind of thing would be possible. Uh -huh. But yet, here we are, at the end of 2020, and uh, we're grabbing files from around the world. Should be just about done. Okay. Okay, now when we do a directory of disk 2, there's the weather image. All the files that were on the, the weather image from Poland are now on my SD card. Uh, look here. And you can see the speed difference when it's pulling the directory. You can see it's a little bit slower when we're pulling it over the internet compared to when we're pulling it straight from the SD card quite a bit faster but it worked uh, we've copied files from a diskette in Poland to a diskette on my SD card uh, and now I hit the A button to swap the disk images and we're gonna run a memory location E477 and reboot the FujiNet and if all goes right it's going to boot this weather application from my SD card, attach to the internet, grab the local weather conditions and forecast from my area, and put it up on the screen. Uh, 
And here we go, the Fujinet open weather client is initializing. So locate my IP address, says I'm in Clovis, California, which is close. Uh, and there's my weather. I'm going to hit F for forecast, and it's going to go grab the next few days worth of weather. Trying to see if I can take my Christmas lights down on Saturday. And it looks like a distant possibility I can take them down. It showed rain a few days ago for Saturday the 2nd, but now it looks pretty good. Let's check out Sunday. Sunday looks pretty good too, so we should be able to take the Christmas decorations down and reload the weather. Okay, so I'm going to reset the FujiNet and go back into the FujiNet config so we can go over again real quick what I did. But, like I said, the hardest thing that I think people are having is, is remembering that if, as far as the computer is concerned, the FujiNet is just floppy drives hooked up to it. So you treat it as if you would treat a floppy drive. So we've got our SD card, and now you can see it's got the FujiNet folder, which is created from the FujiNet config. And we've got our weather image. So we've got our weather diskette on the SD card. If you want to make another one, do new. And let's do BBS. Call it, we're going to say, do our BBS disk here. <clears throat> and we're going to create a 90K disk. And we're going to say yes. And let's mount it in the second slot. And by default, when you create a new image, it's going to mount it at read write. So you kind of need to have that image writable if you need to format it. Uh, so we've got, again, I just took another blank diskette. And I have popped it in my second drive and told FujiNet how to look at these things where drive one is still my DOS. Uh, let's go down and eject the weather one from Poland. We don't need that anymore. And then let's reboot it again. We've got DOS in drive one and I've got a blank non-formatted disk in drive two. So let's go reboot back to DOS. Go into DOS. We look at drive one again, DOS dupe in the test, and we'll look at drive two, and it's going to show zero sectors because it's not initialized. So initialize the disk. Yes. Wait. Disk to format. Let's read. This, pick disk number two, and yes to format it. And now when we look at disk two, we've got 708 free sectors. Okay, so we've got DOS disk in one with a basic program on it, and a blank disk that's been formatted in drive two. Uh, you can write DOS files to that disk if you wanted to. Like we can do write DOS files to disk two. Of course this takes up space that you don't need to take up if you're not going to boot to this disk. And we're going to look at it again. We should see DOS and dupe on disk two now. And now let's copy a file. Uh, or let's take and copy that basic file from drive one to drive two. So we do C for copy file, do D1. Test.base to D2. And we're copying from floppy drive one to floppy drive two. So now when we go look at two, we're gonna see test.base on. So again, these images are just diskettes. That's the way you got to look at it. So you can use any of the DOS commands to copy files between diskettes, uh, disk duplicator programs to duplicate disks from drive to drive. Uh, it's it's just a floppy disk as far as a computer is concerned. So as you can see, it's really easy to do. Uh, it shouldn't cause anybody too much headaches. I know it. Uh, you know, for, for a lot of us, it's been a few years since we've used the Atari. So trying to remember all these commands and how to do things is uh, challenging sometimes, but it comes back to you. You know, I, I really haven't used the Atari computer in about 30 years, and it's slowly starting to come back to me. But just remember, your FujiNet is a floppy drive, and treat it as such, and you won't have any problems. <clears throat> Reboot. Oops. Reboot back into the FujiNet config. So that's basically it, you guys. Just uh, remember that these things are floppy drives. Treat them as such so that you don't get confused on how to work, how to work the FujiNet. Uh, create a new image. Make it the size you want 
and you can physically initialize with whatever version of DOS you're using. Mount it to a drive slot. Make sure it's read-write. Again, by default, when you create a new image, it's going to come on writable. Uh, but if you want to reload that later and use it, make it writable, make sure you attach it as writable when you mount it. Uh, and have fun. I'm really excited seeing what everybody's doing with the FujiNet. I'm looking forward to uh, 2021 and seeing what kind of new awesome software you guys are going to develop for this great device. And uh, have fun out there with them. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.